people in the gallery as well. Do I need to? We're just waiting, I think, for some members' microphones and things to be sorted. Ooh. Okay, can we make a start then, in that case? Um, can I welcome members and the viewing public, uh, which includes people in the gallery, but also people who may be watching us on the webcast, um, for this special meeting of the City Council, which has been convened for the purposes of considering a motion to confer the honorary freedom of the city on the Right Honourable Mr. Richard Caban. A second item of business will be considered regarding the establishment of a twin city relationship with Kamenskaya. Now, have I got that right or very wrong? How, did I say it very badly? Khmel <laughs> Nitsky. In, in that case, I'm going to go back and sue Google. <laughs> My apologies. As a Welsh woman, I'm so used to people mispronouncing words from my country. I get it. Right. Um, I'm anticipating that the special meeting will be completed in about 45 minutes, and we'll then have a short break to enable the webcasting system to be reset and to allow for members of the public to depart or to access the public gallery ready for the ordinary meeting, which will start at three o'clock or, or shortly afterwards. Please can I ask the Interim Director of Legal and Governance to announce the housekeeping arrangements. Please can I have your attention while I make a few housekeeping announcements. Can members of the public familiarise themselves with the fire safety and evacuation notices displayed in the public gallery? In the event of the fire alarm sounding, please take instruction from the security attendants who will be in attendance throughout the meeting. Can everybody please switch mobile devices to silent mode so as not to disturb the conduct of the meeting? The meeting today will be webcast and the recording will also be available for people to view later through the Council's website. It is also possible that Sheffield Live TV will record and rebroadcast this meeting. Photography, video and sound recording of the meeting is permitted, but the Lord Mayor does have discretion to withdraw or suspend this permission if the recording is disrupting the conduct of the meeting or is being undertaken in a manner which could capture personal information or if a member of the public participating objects to being recorded. Any member of the public due to speak at the meeting who does not wish to be recorded should say so at the start of their speech and the Lord Mayor will suspend the permission to record their contribution. For safety reasons, please may I request that recording equipment is not held over the balcony. Finally, although there are no longer any specific <coughs> COVID safety measures to adhere to, individuals are very welcome to wear a face covering within the chamber. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, item two, apologies for absence. I have Mike Chaplin. 
I believe that's five pounds to the Lord Mayor's charity. Mike Chaplin, Ben Curran, Craig Gamble Pugh, Maza Iqbal, Maruf Rauf, Malachi Haby, Penny Baker, Mick Rooney, Gail Smith, Gary Weatherall, and Paul Wood. Are there any others? Have I missed anybody? Lord Mayor? Um, we also have apologies for part one of this meeting from Councillor Mark Jones. Thank you. Item three, are there any declarations of interest? Colin. Uh, uh, question for clarification. Um, there's an item on the agenda uh, referring to um, registration of private landlords. And as a private landlord, I just want to clarify whether I need to declare an interest in this. I think that's the next meeting, but I'll give that clarification at this one if you were required. Um, yes, um, this has been raised with me. Um, a, a, a landlord has a declarable, uh, sorry, a disclosable pecuniary interest in relation to that, uh, that property. There are items on the following agenda which relate to licensing of private landlords, but there will be no decision. no decision made in relation to actual licensing. It is merely requesting that the matter be referred to a subcommittee, uh, sorry, to policy committee, to consider whether they wish to take any further action on them. Therefore, there's no direct relationship with any disclosable pecuniary interest. No member need, who has such a, an interest needs to withdraw from the meeting. Is that okay with everybody? Thank you. In which case, we'll now move to item four, honorary freedom of the City of Sheffield for the Right Honourable Mr. Richard Caven. And as Lord Mayor, I will be proposing this motion. So with my classic words, I am standing up. So Richard Caven. Harold Wilson said that Labour owes more to Methodism than Marxism, in which case Richard was doubly blessed because his father, George Caburn, was a staunch member of the Communist Party and his mum, Mary, was an equally staunch Methodist. So clearly Richard gained from both traditions. He was born in 1943, left school in 1958, and started an apprenticeship at First Brown, where I believe he was with Roger Barton, another miscreant. He rose to become a shop steward and then works convener, and he was also involved in the Sheffield Trades Council. Richard was passionate about injustice, Thank you. Richard was passionate about injustice, so he joined the anti-apartheid movement, and he was actually the founder of the Sheffield Anti-Apartheid Group. He rose up to become national treasurer of the, the anti-apartheid movement for Great Britain, and he is one of the few people who could call Nelson Mandela Madiba, because he was a friend of his. That's how much Nelson Mandela admired Richard. He's had a European and Westminster parliamentary career. His work as sports minister on securing the Olympic Games for the UK was one of his great successes, especially in persuading South Africa to support the UK bid. But a few words with Madiba, and I believe those certainly helped smooth the way. But apart from his amazing wife, Margaret, who has the patience of a saint, his passion has always been Sheffield. It goes through him like a stick of rock. So 
actually, it's Richard's second wind that we are honouring today, because Richard didn't sit on his laurels when he retired. He looked at what still needed doing in Sheffield. The Advanced Manufacturing Park is one of his projects, working with universities and industry to innovate and develop new ways of manufacturing, and we have a world-class facility there. <coughs> but that wasn't enough for Richard. His biggest achievement so far, again, is the Olympic Legacy Park, the only one outside London, the only one outside any of the Olympic host cities in the world, in fact. Bringing together a strong public-private partnership, he has helped to create an unrivaled cluster of life science assets. And there's more to come. The next stage of the Olympic Legacy Park will ensure a real sporting, health, education and skills legacy for generations to come. I cannot think of a more worthy and deserving candidate than Richard Caven, despite the fact that he's a Sheffield United supporter and it was Sheffield United people who approached the council to ask whether he could be made a freeman. Richard's dedication is clear to see from his life's work. When most people retire from Parliament, they live a quiet life. Richard retired and immediately started improving Sheffield and the lives of our citizens. And as I have said, thanks to him, we have the Sheffield Olympic Legacy Park and also the Advanced Wellbeing Research Centre, which is making such a difference to people's lives now and for our future, reflecting perfectly his ministerial career and his passion for and love of Sheffield. Richard's heart and soul goes into everything he does, always putting this city first. And it's my absolute privilege to name him an honorary Freeman, and we will look forward to celebrating his achievements and this honor during an official ceremony in the new year. So may I move that under and by virtue of the provisions of section 249 brackets, five brackets of the Local Government Act 1972, the honorary freedom of the City of Sheffield be conferred by the Council on the Right Honourable Mr Richard Caburn in recognition of his contribution to the advancement of sport in Sheffield nationwide and internationally and in doing so rendering eminent services to the City. I move. And I understand that Councillor Peter Price is going to second this motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm honoured and delighted, actually, to, to second this uh, nomination that, that Richard Cable become um, honorary, men, honorary member of the city. Um, I wish you'd left me something to say, actually. But I, um, I first knew Richard when he was simple shop steward down at Firth Browns and I was branch secretary of the union up at the university. We used to meet regularly at the trades council meetings and, uh, and have our debates and arguments then. He was, we were both, he was very active in the uh, anti-apartheid movement, of course, and, and, and at national level, and the Free, Man, Free Nelson Mandela campaign. Indeed, as you say, he became quite a friend of, of Nelson Mandela, and it was quite uh, instrumental in acquiring the African vote when uh, it became uh, a, to, to get the Olympic Games to, to Britain. And his, his contact with Nelson had helped him to get the good word out because we weren't very popular amongst the African nations. You probably gathered at the time. And I think it was Nelson's uh, um, speaking up the, the British bid that, that got us that thing. And that was uh, completely down to Richard Caven's contact. I also knew his dad, of course, who was a big member of the EUW, he was a communist. And he was also, by the way, awarded the freedom of the city. And I was there when he was awarded him for his contribution to the trade union movement. So it would be the first time ever we've had a father and son in the freedom of Sheffield. I think it, we, we ought to bear that in mind. He also, he also became a UMP and um, introduced the Sheffield dialect, as I understand it, 
to the interpreters. Nobody could understand him when he went to his chef for a ramble, when he was ranting, and he took a special uh, teaching lesson for, for the, for the uh, interpreters who, who were in the EEC at the time. However, his real heart, of course, was in Sheffield and back here. He had a small time as, as regional uh, minister, but when he became sports minister, I think he came into his element. Sheffield at the time had, had acquired the World Student Games and was decided to use sport as its regeneration drive and, and catalyst, and he became very active in that. But I, I personally believe he's the greatest sports minister this country's had. He served for a long time, normally the in and out sports minister, a couple of years at the most. He was in six years, and he transformed the, the uh, organisation. He devolved it down to the regions. The regions became very powerful. Funds were, developed, were devolved down to the region. I had the honour of being chair of Support England Yorkshire for six years. And I, I saw the money that was coming to our region and to our city. It's, it's no um, chance, really, that, that the English Institute of Sport arrived in Sheffield and things like that. And we owe a great debt to Richard for what he did for this city. And I hope people will, uh, will recognise that fact. The other thing he got involved with, of course, was the heart of the city. People may forget this, but it's very controversial at the time. We will look like that and not, not getting it through the council uh, because it would have carried kind of cost to the city. Richard got onto the telephone to Eddie Healy, who was a big owner of Meadow Hall, and got and got, he would underwrite any loss that that was going to make on those retail outlets. And that helped to get it through the city council. Richard's contacts with the public and private sector is quite unique. Uh, and his friends across all parties. And, um, it's, and that is, 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 is seen. Is, is his impact. Once he retired from, from Parliament, his, um, his work he did in the, uh, the um, advanced manufacturing park, it brought in the public and private sector, Rolls-Royce, Boeing, Aerospace Technology, McLaren, all came through his influence and his contacts. And then, of course, concentrated on the Olympic Legacy Park. And I fell out with him on the Don Valley Stadium together when he, uh, he supported its demolition and reinvestment. Anyway, that's by the way. Looking back, it was a proper decision. Because what he's achieved down there is, is amazing. And quite unique in this country. Brought together the private sector, the universities, the hospitals, and the council in, in, in developing down there. A new community stadium. The Sheffield Eagles are on there. The Sheffield United women's football team's on there. And the school's on there. University Technology College, UTC, doing sports, science, computing, health, the Sheffield University, Alm University got a big, big block down there, and, the, and Children's Hospital, but all, all bringing together sport, culture, and fitness and health. And I think this is a quite unique in this country. A brand new basketball centre is being built down there, three courts, a, a plus one for spectators for the, for, for the basketball professional basketball team. It really is quite unique, and I think all that is due to Richard's initiative, energy, enthusiasm that in high. What well, brings in all, all different groups, um, different, not just political parties, but the private sector, the Chamber of Commerce, and indeed, unfortunately, Sheffield United. I, I, and I can't think of another politician in this city has got a record that matches Richard's ability to, to bring together all community groups, whatever your political persuasion. And I, I'm, I'm honoured to be able to second this notice of motion, Lord Mayor. And I think we owe him a great letter of gratitude, actually. And it's, and, um, so I'm quite happy and pleased and delighted to second your motion, Chair. Lord Mayor. I'm going to call on the Deputy Lord Mayor next. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And, and thank you, Councillor Price, for the history lesson as, as well. Um, I hadn't realised his father and son as, as freemen of, of, of the city, and it's a, it's a great honour. Um, we, on our side, are, are going to support this, um, not primarily for Richard's work as a politician, elected politician, actually, but more for his work post-elected um, politician and what he's done for Sheffield. I don't want to disclose a secret, but the advanced manufacturing park is actually in Rotherham, but we don't, we don't, we don't really let that, that, that uh, cat out of the bag. But um, Don Valley Stadium as well, in that area around, around that, the, and the incubator around there. I must admit, I was quite sceptical when uh, Richard came forth with the, the, the plans and actually uh, said to him, it looks like it's been run up on the back of a fag packet, some of these calculations. But to be fair, and I always try and be fair, 
it, it has been delivered and it, it, it is there and it is a big asset, not just to this city, but to the country and to the way it's research and development and, and it, it's something to be credited by. Um, I've come across Richard many times, um, actually starting back when, and this is a bit poignant, when we were putting together the bid for the World Cup um, in, in, uh, in England and Sheffield was a big part of that. It's when we were in power and we were going down to, to Wembley and things with, with the groups and, and uh, working on, on that with him as well. But um, <laughs> I've seen many events, but one of the things that sticks in my mind is the Sheffield Half Marathon goes past our, our house. So we sta stand there and you know, applaud Richard and jog along with him for only a couple hundred yards you know, as he goes past, but he's still there as a former sports minister, actually actively taking part well into his, dare I say, 70s and things, and still, still, still running. So on behalf of our group, we are supporting this great honour, and it is something that should not be taken lightly as, as freemen of the city, and it's for his work recognising his political work, but actually his post-political work on behalf of all the citizens of Sheffield, that we're happy to third this motion. Okay, thank you. I'm now going to call upon Douglas Johnson to speak. I'd like him to be heard courteously. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I don't know if you read what I'm going to say or something. Well, I was going to say, first of all, thank you for the, uh, the, the explanations and the autobiographies of, uh, of Richard Caborn, which are actually very interesting and um, you know, certainly worth hearing. Um, and the fascination with the name Caborn, of course, comes from where if we're only at Caborn's Corner. And um, Peter mentioned that, um, you know, that he's the only father and son duo to be close for Freedom of the City. And of course, Caborn's Corner was where um, his father, George Caborn, um, led the the workers coming from the steel factories, you know, where the ones from Attercliffe would join up the ones coming from the north of the city and would meet there before the march into town. And um, uh, yes, George Caborn was actually granted Freedom of the City in 1981. Um, so, of course, when um, even Peter was younger than he is now. But yes, was, was there. Um, and of course, that's, that's actually a really important part of our history. Important to point out, of course, George Caborn was never a member of the Labour Party. He was a staunch communist for all his working life um, and, you know, fully backed by. And a really big figure in the history of the, the city's workers there. But reflecting on the freedom of the city, um, it is the highest award that we can offer as a council. And only last week it was set out in, in a paper that members of the council here discussed that Freeman City should um, only be used for the most exceptional contributions, usually of international historical importance. And the examples given were Nelson Mandela, who's already been mentioned, um, Jess Ennis, Helen Sharman, the first woman in space, you know, so actually going beyond international then, and the Yorkshire Regiment as a body. And despite these names, um, if you look back at the list of uh, free, free, uh, the freedom of the city, it's recognised, um, and we all recognise, there's a lack of diversity in those honoured. Um, not just in the sort of father and son arrangement, but a lack of diversity. And we agreed to devise a new process um, for all sorts of uh, city awards and how this council could recognise people who have done things uh, for the good of the city and in the city um, with a new system of public nominations. So our slight awkwardness here... Um, using Terry's phrase now, my slight awkwardness here is that we've now have a, a non-public nomination that's come before us today. Um, we, in a way, we have had some fine speeches on this, but of course, the, all the briefing given is it's for um, the advancement of sport in, in Sheffield. Um, and I don't mean to, uh, you know, criticize that in any way, but it's come before us without going through this process, which everyone's now agreed that we need to revitalize and make sure is modern and fitting and reflects the present and future of the city uh, rather than um, the, the past. So it's not all about history, um, which is unusual for me. Um, so Richard has certainly done a lot of useful work for and his role of chair of the Olympic Legacy Park after his retirement as an MP. But of course, actually, most people know him as an MP. He was 
originally selected for what was um, what was a you know, safe Labour seat at that time. He rose to become a junior minister in the Labour government when we had that uh, for a few years, and he developed lots of contacts in the sports world. Um, he's been involved in the in the nuclear industry, and there was the reference to the advanced manufacturing part there. Support that, and of course, that will be of relevance to manufacturing firms in the nuclear industry in, in Sheffield. The difficulty is that it doesn't quite make it to the level of eminence that seems to be envisaged by this, you know, this very high award of the freedom of the city. So what I, I would propose, and um, if, if we talked about this earlier on, then the proposal there, would propose that we defer this until we have this new revised honour system in place um, with the criteria that um, has all been agreed need to be revised. Um, and so we, that is to include an independent civic awards panel. So that's the way I'd approach it. I, I think it's um, perhaps, given that we have made this formal decision only last week, it seems a bit premature to just turn our back on that straight away. So I'd, with all due respect to, to Richard, and I certainly appreciate all the long service that he's put in, um, that is the situation that, that we're in. So that, that's what I propose as a way forward. Thank you, Lord Mayor, for taking that. Does anybody else wish to speak? No. Oh, Anne, sorry. Did you wish to speak? I do. I, I just find that shameful that you've made that kind of statement after hearing what both Councillor Price and the Lord Mayor have said about Councillor Cabod. And I'm sat here actually quite cross with you as a party. We've been working on these Honours Awards for over a year now. Your representative on the board was Kaltu Elmi. She hasn't passed on that information to you. That's not our problem. And actually, it was uh, the Lord Mayor who specified that Richard was nominated by Sheffield United. And that did come to us. And we did ask you, I came myself and spoke to you about it. And as far as I was concerned, you said to me, Angela, that you didn't have a problem with it and you were going to take it to the group. So I'm sorry. I find it absolutely disgraceful the way that you've just behaved. And I'm very saddened on behalf of Richard, but also on behalf of this city. Richard is well liked by everybody. And I'm ashamed. I'm absolutely ashamed today to be in this council chamber with people like you. Um, I believe the Lord Mayor is allowed to sum up. And I'm on my feet again. Um, I would just like to reiterate why Richard has been proposed. I would disagree with Douglas that he does not have an international reputation. He certainly is known internationally for his work around sports administration. And certainly in South Africa, he is known particularly well because of all the work he put into the anti-apartheid movement. Certainly at the same time when we know that a prime minister was treating the ANC as terrorists. Richard was there from the start fighting for the abolition of apartheid. And that re international reputation, as both myself and Councillor Price have said, was instrumental in us then being able to, Britain getting the uh, Olympic Games because he had the relationship with Nelson Mandela, who had the relationship with many of the Af other African countries. Now, I understand what Douglas is saying about there is a new way going forward. This is going to be the last freedom giving under the old system. 
and I recognise that from now on it will be the new one. But I would ask you to support this because Richard is definitely a man of Sheffield, a man who left school at 14 and made his way in the world and look what he achieved. He wasn't a university graduate, he was somebody who came through the shop floor and became such an eminent and well-respected man. And for that, I think we should be giving him the freedom of the city. Thank you, everybody. And we have no more speakers. Sorry, I wasn't sure if the leader was... You can't now, because I've spoken. Those are the rules. OK. In that case, I'm now going to move to the vote on the motion. Is the motion agreed? I will take silence as the affirmation of the meeting. If any member wishes to dissent, please raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, uh, me members, sorry, thanks, hands down. Uh, Hands down, it's, we, I've noted that, so we will go to a vote. And the vote will be conducted using the electronic voting system. Have you, do you got... Okay. What we will do, actually... Hang on, hang on, whoa... Can, can we? Yeah. What I'm actually going to ask is to have a show of hands. And we've all got hands. Beautiful. That's a song, isn't it? Right. Okay. Those in favour of the motion to give the freedom of the city to Richard Caburn. And those against? And are there any abstentions? Thank you. In which case that is clearly carried and the city of Sheffield will be bestowing the freedom of the city on Richard Caban. Thank you all very much. Okay. We are now moving on to item five, which is the establishment of a twin city relationship with the city in Ukraine, whose name I pronounce so badly, I'm not going to try again. There's a maximum time limit of 25 minutes for this item, and we're going to receive an address from the mayor and deputy mayor of Kamensky. Presenting a brief overview of their city, their city's current situation in respect of the current conflict in their country and their desire to establish twin city relations with Sheffield. Uh, it's expected that the address will take between 10 and 15 minutes. Uh, the leader of the council will respond and I will provide a short opportunity for other members of the council to speak. The council will then be asked to authorise me to sign a memorandum of understanding with the city on behalf of the city council and the citizens of Sheffield. Myself and the mayor of Kmelnelski will then sign the memorandum. The terms of the memorandum have been provided to the leaders of the political groups in advance of today's meeting. So I'm very pleased to welcome to the meeting Alexander Simchishin, Mayor of Khmelnytsky, and Nikola Vavrishchuk, Deputy Mayor. And huge apologies now for my pronunciations. And they're accompanied by Tanya Klimenko, who is going to be helping with the translation. So may I invite Alexander to speak, please.
Thank you very much. Доброго дня, шановне товариство, шановна пані Лорд Мар, шановні панове депутати, шановні земляки. The right worshipful the Lord Mayor of Sheffield, Seanad Mayor Richards. Uh, esteemed Sorry. I practiced. <laughs> Esteemed elected representatives, dear Ukrainian guests, and other members of public. Надзвичайно вдячний вам за можливість сьогодні бути разом з вами, донести свої думки про ситуацію, яка відбувається в Україні, а також свої думки стосовно нашої подальшої співпраці між Хмельницьким і Шефілдом. I am very grateful for this opportunity to address you today to tell from the bottom of my heart what I think about the situation in Ukraine, but more importantly, to lay out the road for future and our plans for future cooperation with Sheffield. Насамперед, я щиро хочу подякувати усім вам, усьому народу Великої Британії за неймовірну підтримку і допомогу, яку ви надаєте сьогодні Україні і українцям. I should first of all say what I am eternally grateful to the United Kingdom and every citizen of the United Kingdom for your unreserved support and for huge help you provided to my nation in these treacherous times. Сьогодні вже 294 дні, як в Україні триває війна, війна за свободу, війна за демократію, війна за права людини. І війна за наше українське майбутнє. Today is a day 2094 since my country is at war and it's a war for democracy, a war for human rights and a war of survival for survival of my country. Насправді Росія напала на Україну ще в 2014 році. І Україна за свою свободу воює вже майже 9 років. Ну, але після 24 лютого наше життя змінилося докорінно і повністю. As a matter of fact, this war began in 2014. So it's been almost 9 years now of our fight. However, since the February 24th of 2022, life of every Ukrainian has changed profoundly. Насправді, вся наша реальна змі... реальність змінилася повністю. Зараз ми не маємо часу сперечатися, не маємо часу на будь-які дискусії, тому що ми зобов'язані захистити свободу, захистити демократію. Ми кожної хвилини, кожної секунди воюємо за майбутнє цивілізованого світу. And the profound change meant that not only we had to mobilize ourselves, we had to leave aside all squirrels, our little disagreements, we had to unite, we had to walk as one, walking for future of democracy in a whole of this uh, world. Мені було дуже приємно, що сьогодні ми стали свідками дуже поважної події, коли ви вручили звання почесного громадянину достойному мешканцю Шефілда. I'm quite pleased to be present at a time when or at a meeting where elected representatives are bestowing a, a title, a honorable title of one to one of your citizens. Буквально місяць тому ми теж в своїй міській раді вручали звання почесного громадянина Хмельницького і вручили це звання 94 нашим мешканцям. Наймолодшому було 18 років, найстаршому було 58 років. Recently we had a similar meeting in our uh, city council where we've uh, given the title to 94 distinguished individuals the youngest of uh, which was 18 years old and the eldest uh, 58 years old. 
Але, на жаль, це звання вони всі отримали посмертно, бо героїчно загинули у війні проти Росії. Кожного з них вбила Росія, розпочавши цю війну. Unfortunately, none of them were there to receive the title, because all of them died in a war with Russia. Насправді, війна в Україні надзвичайно важка, надзвичайно страшна. В її результаті ми втрачаємо найкращих своїх людей. The most terrible side of this war is what we are losing the best people. Буквально цієї суботи, кілька днів тому, перед тим, як приїхати до вас, я повернувся з лінії фронту, де приїхав більше трьох тисяч кілометрів і бачив ті міста і села, які Росія зруйнувала повністю, де не залишилося жодної вцілілої будівлі, де вбили тисячі цивільних людей, жінок, дітей, старших людей. Just on Saturday I came back from my latest and most recent trip to the front line. I drove over 3000 kilometers along the ruined villages and cities. In some places not a single building survived. In others I saw thousands of fresh graves. Ну, але українці не здаються і не здадуться ніколи. Українці прекрасно розуміють, що для них ця війна історична, що для них ця війна священа. І на сьогодні українці захищають і воюють не за територію. However, rest assured, Ukrainians are not giving up. They are not yielding. It's a war which is bigger than Ukraine. They are not fighting for our territory. Ми воюємо за свободу, ми воюємо за демократію. Ми воюємо за права людини, ми воюємо за цивілізований світ і ми воюємо за життя. We are fighting for freedom, for democracy, for human rights. We are fighting for the most basic right, right to be alive. Тому ми обов'язково переможемо в цій війні. And that's why we are going to win. Я хочу щиро вам всім подякувати за те, що від сьогоднішнього дня у нас розпочнеться співпраця між Шефілдом і Хмельницьким. Нам надзвичайно приємно, що це буде саме англійське місто, адже Великобританія на сьогодні є одним з найнадійніших партнерів України і українського народу. І меморандум, який ми підпишемо сьогодні, це демонстрація для хмельничан, для всіх українців, Демонстрація того, що незважаючи на жорстоку війну, незважаючи на терористичні атаки, які робить сьогодні Росія, в тому числі і по нашому місту, обстрілюючи його ракетами, 9 ракет прилетіло до нас за останній місяць, незважаючи ні на що, життя продовжується, українське майбутнє є і нам допомагає цивілізований світ. Це меморандум, який сьогодні will signal to everyone in Khmelnytsky and beyond that there is hope, there is future, and despite the terroristic attacks which just recently nine rockets exploded in Khmelnytsky, despite all this, there is a way forward and we have support from all civilized countries. Today, в нас так само надзвичайно складна ситуація, тому що кожен день Росія обстрілює ракетами нашу енергетику і намагається поставити нас на коліна тим, щоб залишити 
без світла, без тепла, без води. The situation is in Ukraine is quite difficult. Every day there are attacks which are targeting civilian infrastructure and the aim is to deprive Ukrainians from uh, electricity, water, heating. Но але насправді це все нас робить тільки сильнішими і тільки більше мотивує нас боротися за нашу свободу за нашу демократію, за наше право жити як цивілізований світ. But what those terrorist attacks achieve, they only achieve what we are getting more determined and we are only getting to appreciate even more the values of democracy, the values of civilized life, the values of peaceful life. Ще раз і ще раз щиро дякую вам за допомогу і за підтримку. Для нас буде велика честь мати дружні відносини з містом Шефілд. І на завершення хочу сказати, що наша перемога, перемога України, це буде перемога цивілізації, це буде перемога добра, це перемога демократії, перемога свободи. З вашою допомогою і підтримкою ми обов'язково переможемо. Слава Україні! I would like to uh, finish my speech by saying that uh, if signed today the memorandum will signal that you agree with us, you believe in us, and you think the same as us, what victory of Ukraine will mean the victory for democracy, victory for civilized world, and hope for everyone who shares these values. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you very much. Я на завершення хочу зробити подарунок для пані лорд мера. After the official speech, uh, one lord mayor would like to present a very special present to the rightful voters. Це особливий прапор. Цей прапор розписаний українськими воїнами, воїнами, які зараз в ці хвилини, в ці секунди захищають свободу захищають весь цивілізований світ. This flag is signed by uh, uh, by armed forces members who are right now fighting in a front line. Every single signature on this flag is from someone who is fighting right now. Головний напис на цьому прапорі це Sends Great Britain for supporting Ukraine. Thank you. І ще маленький подаруночок – це кубок, де напис про наші міста, про наше сьогодні підписання меморандуму «Шефлд і Хмельницький. Супорт Україні». І це на стейнлесі стіл. To, uh, the thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, followed up. I've followed some speeches in this chamber, but nothing um, of that magnitude. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Oscar Lander, 
and certainly my caller uh, for the number of times calls we've had um, over teams. So to finally get you here is a, a real kind of feat and, and thank you for coming. It's okay, I'm, I'm used to getting stopped, it's usually by the Lord Mayor, so um, <laughs> we'll, we'll carry on. I'd like to thank Nick uh, Hamilton and the team for putting this together. It really is uh, a lot of hard work gone in to uh, getting yourselves to come to, to our proud city. I'd also like to thank you, Tanya, not only for today, but for all your help in our Eurovision bid uh, when we went down to Salute. Don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to Martin shortly, but no, it's, um, no it was a real honour and, and a pleasure to, to go with the re re Ukrainian representatives. Before I start, uh, Mr. Mayor, I understand you have a 85% approval rating in, in the city. I think it's only something we could ever dream of in, in, in our city. But we open our arms to the people of Ukraine. We open our arms to the residents of Klimensky. I'm sorry if I've got that wrong, but there's a bit of a twang. Just listening to you speak on behalf of your country, men and women, and also the residents we was on a call with my caller when the energy uh, supplies was getting bombed out. I was sat in my conservatory to try and get your head round that kind of conversation as everything that yourself and the city was facing at that time was truly surreal to me. On a number of trips around many of, of Europe, and the battlefields, to see the scars of yesteryear, but to live through it as you are going today, we can only begin to feel the pain that you must be feeling at this moment in time. So to have the opportunity as comrades to hold our arms out with this memorandum of understanding, for our two great proud cities to discuss trade. And we are really, really proud of our maid in Sheffield. And for yourselves, I know how proud you are in your maid in Klemensky. So to be able to sign with that, your great city along with our city universities, so we're able to join through education and through dialogue. Also, the cultural experiences between the two cities can only, as you quite rightly say, send a signal that democracy will always win. No matter what disagreement, no matter what upset, democracy has to win. To be able to get our two great cities to come together in that civic understanding between us. We are striving in Sheffield to be a fair and inclusive city. We have often said in this chamber we will not yield from that. And in our solidarity and in the signing of the Memorandum of Understandings, which our Lord Mayor will sign with the Mayor, I hope that not only in Sheffield, not only in Kleminsky, not only in Ukraine, but across Europe, it shows that we will not put up with tyrants and that we will stand shoulder to shoulder. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I will now call upon Councillor Shafak Mohammed to speak. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and welcome to our city, the city of Sheffield, the city, the UK's first city of sanctuary, a city that welcomes all, and we welcome you today.
prior to this meeting today, I happened to talk to a colleague of mine. Um, who's, we are in contact with lots of friends in Ukraine. Um, a member of your parliament, Kira Rudikt, I think, is, if I pronounce the name right. And in passing, there was a message about what's the mayor like? Yourself, sir. And the message from Kira is, he's a good guy, but a bit strict. I kid you not, it's here, colleagues. <laughs> I don't know if Kira's from your party or not, but that's what she, that's the message I got on WhatsApp. No, no she's not from his party. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm not from his party. <laughs> but today we stand united. Because not only as a city, but as a country, but as a world, we are standing united behind freedom. Freedom for you, the, the country you create, to decide your own future. And for us today, it's the start of a friendship between people. <laughs> you know, we have welcomed people from Ukraine right across your country, into our homes, into our communities. You can see the contribution you are making. And we tried so desperately, my colleague here, Martin Smith, to actually get Eurovision on your behalf so we could celebrate Ukrainian culture within our city. We didn't get that, but rest assured, we'll continue to actually speak up on behalf of the people of Ukraine and celebrate the contribution that the Ukrainian community that have been here a few months, but also years, are making to our city. So I'm proud and I'm sure everyone else is here today to be supporting this start of a new relationship between our cities and we will be right beside you ultimately when you win against the tyrant Putin. Thank you. person to speak will be Councillor Angela Argentia. Thank you Lord Mayor and welcome to Sheffield. Sheffield as my colleague has mentioned is was the first city of sanctuary uh, in the UK in the world. Um, it's a city that has over many years welcomed people from all over the world um, including myself um, as a migrant to this city, uh, as an adoptive citizen of this city, I am very proud to represent the city in this forum. Um, and we have had a Ukrainian community in the city for very many years, but also welcomed quite a large number of families to the city since uh, the spring of this year when the war first started in the Ukraine. Um, so we are hoping that people from Ukraine that have been settled in the city for a long time will continue to make their contributions and also people who are here, um, you know, just since this year will either decide that they're happy enough to be here to stay with us or go back to Ukraine if they so want to. I think these gestures that are symbolic but also practical from our point of view as a city, they're very important. The sisterhood, the twinning between two cities is an important signal to send to the world out there to say that we stand united and we're looking at the future with hope because whilst you were talking about fighting for, you know, fighting a war, practically fighting for survival, fighting for human rights, our hope is for peace. And when we get that peace, we can then look at the future with hope and we can build those relationships again and we can rebuild the country again. I just want to go back to 
the idea of what contribution migrants make to the city. And I hope that this will be the same in a rebuilt um, Kamlinski, um, where people like me that come from a different country can one day stand as a politician and speak to someone from a different country. Because we are all united and we all want to live peacefully and in democracy. So hopefully we can look forward to many years of collaboration between Sheffield and your city. And thank you for coming. Um, I'm just going to add something quickly because I met Alexander and Nicola earlier this morning at Bernard Road Recycling Depot. And I mentioned that coming from a Welsh rural background, something that has really intrigued and inspired me has been the Ukrainian farmers just running off with all those burnt out tanks and recycling them in their farmyards and making something of them. And I just really liked that because I just know that rural Welsh farmers would be very much up for doing the same sort of thing. To which Nicola said, yes, it's inspired us as well. And they have produced stamps, postcards, and envelopes showing a farmer defeating a tank in just the way that has inspired so many of us when we've seen these, vision, these uh, pictures on our TV screens. So there was a competition for something which would um, represent the phrase, I've got it here, good evening, we're from Ukraine. And I think that those farmers there absolutely personify the Ukrainian spirit. And I'm very <coughs> proud to be the owner of this and you'll come and see it later. Thank you. So, so can I ask councillors Fox and Mohammed to formally move and second a motion to authorise me to sign a memora memorandum of understanding with the city of Mensky. It's Shemensky, isn't it? On behalf of the city council and the citizens of Sheffield. At Councillor Fox. Lord Mayor, honoured to propose. Lord Mayor, honoured to second. Motion agreed. I'll take silence as the affirmation of the meeting. Okay. Can I have a show of hands for all those in favour, please? Absolutely unanimous. Nen com. So myself and Alexander will now sign the memorandum. There are four versions, two in each language, and we will retain one of each, and Alexander will retain the other two. So can I ask Alexander, Nicola, and Tanya to yeah, walk this way? Can you move my chair? I don't know what to push my chair right back in there. Okay, have you got a pen? Or do you need mine? Okay. I'm not sure if we're supposed to have a photo taken. Yeah. Okay. 
And it's amazing to see my, sig my, my name written in Cyrillic. Which way am I looking? Right, let's sign. Oops, I haven't left too much space there, have I? 